As data engineers, I think we all have one professional goal in common, to be as lazy as possible. Okay, so maybe not everyone will say it like that, but for the most part, data engineers like to build new things and move on to the next challenge and not waste their time on repeat processes or carrying out the same monotonous task over and over. So whether your goal is to move on to the next project or take a nap, you're going to need DevOps or data ops. What exactly is data ops? It's a relatively new term that combines the concepts of data and operations. Simply put, it's a way to manage and streamline the flow of data within an organization. As data becomes an increasingly crucial part of business and organizations, it's important to have a system in place to manage it efficiently. By implementing a data ops strategy, companies can ensure that their data is accurate, up-to-date, and easily accessible by those who need it. At its core, data ops involves automating and streamlining the processes involved in managing data. This can include things like ingestion, transformation, and analysis. By automating these processes, organizations can reduce the time and resources required to manage their data infrastructure, freeing up time for more important tasks. But to understand data ops, you need to know DevOps, a process that has enabled thousands of software developers to slack off while their computers take care of the work for them. If you're not familiar with DevOps, it's a set of practices that combine software development and IT operations to shorten the development lifecycle and provide continuous delivery and deployment of software. Basically, it's using automation to reduce software delivery from months to minutes. First things first, you want to set up a version control system. This is a crucial step in the data ops process, as it allows you to track and manage changes to your code base. Some popular options include Git, and that's it, just use Git. Next, you'll wanna set up Continuous Integration, or CI. This is a tool that automatically builds and tests your code each time you make a change, ensuring that your code is always in a deployable state. Some popular CI tools include Jenkins and CircleCI. Once you have your CI system set up, you can move on to Continuous Delivery, or CD. This is the process of automatically delivering code changes to production once they've passed the necessary testing and approval processes. This allows you to deploy code changes quickly and efficiently without having to manually go through the deployment process. Now for the operations side, it's important to have monitoring and logging in place. This allows you to track the performance and stability of your software and quickly identify and fix any issues that may arise. Some popular monitoring and logging tools include Splunk, New Relic, and Logstash. And finally, don't forget about collaboration and communication. Data Ops is all about bringing developers and operations teams together, so it's important to have good communication and collaboration tools in place. Pretty much any of your standard cards on board tools are good. So the data world has always lagged behind the software world in things like automation. The challenge is that in most software, change is coded, tested, and deployed to production. Once there, it's stable and static until the next change is made. With data, things are always in flux. You write code for a new pipeline, test it, and deploy it, but data is constantly moving through with varying quality and controls from source to sync. So data ops is using the DevOps concepts just tweak to try to account for the additional challenges of having constantly changing data movement. The goal is to reduce the end-to-end -end cycle for things like the idea of having a report and the creation of that report. Pipelines are the lifeblood of the data platform. We need quality data to be reliably processed through pipelines to power our analytics. So the operations side of data ops will heavily focus on orchestrating and monitoring those pipelines. Statistical process control should be implemented to detect any deviation from expected pipeline performance. For example, we know the number of rows a pipeline processes every run and the standard deviation. If a run is outside those parameters, an alert is made. This gives our data ops processes a two-pronged approach. Just like DevOps, we need to handle the automation of creating code, testing it, and deploying it, but we also need to automate the monitoring and testing of ongoing pipelines. We just have an extra way for things to break. The next big challenge comes in testing. For software DevOps, it's often possible to create a small subset of test data without production information to run initial tests on code during development. This is test-driven development. But for data, we need to test on the volume we expect, and we often need to test on the whole of the data. Using a subset could miss a lot of potential problems. That means our dev and QA environments work best if they are close to the production data set as possible. 
This could mean a lot more storage needs, a lot more data processing needs, as our pipelines might need to always be running in multiple environments to keep them up to date. And it could also mean challenges in obfuscating user data so it's not available outside production security controls. The last problem I've run into with data ops is that I've worked at several companies with DevOps engineers or entire DevOps teams, but I've never worked at one with a data ops engineer, which puts the work of creating and managing the data ops processes on the data engineers. And that can be quite the task. So if we want to be lazy engineers, it's up to us to automate our way there. And you want to watch this video on agility for data to understand some of the other challenges data engineers face compared to our software friends.